Okay guys, I'm going to do a condenser change out here today at work and um, kind of give you the steps of what I do. First thing I do is go over there to the disconnect, kill the power, go inside, cut the power for the low voltage side as well, make sure it's not calling. Once that's done, you can hook up here on your high side and your low side with your gauges. Two things you can do you could either uh, close down your high side and pump it through the system and let the condenser hold it if the condenser has a bad compressor for say you'll have to do a recovery um, you don't really want to release it that's the proper way to do it so that's what I'm going to tell you and show you and once all that is pumped down you will have a de minimis amount that will come out release it and you can start tackling taking your power off from the contactor move it out the way your uh, t-stat wire move it out the way get all your stuff out the way and then you can once there's no pressure or refrigerant in there you can take it off from here and down there just cut it with a uh, pipe uh, cutting tool um, that's that for that most part and then I typically go with the Goodmans they come with a piston kit I'm on an apartment complex so most of them are a little hang in the closet style uh, evaporator coils so there's a piston kit that comes in that has to go inside um, if it was a TXV you would have to make sure it matches for the unit um, and the TXV should match the condenser outside to the piston that, that's going to go into the uh, piston kit inside at the evaporator pool. Um, and then I might show you a little bit of brazing and what I do from there. So uh, check it out. Yeah, I take these caps off from here to here uh, before I braze because I put some like, cooling gel in here and usually wrap these so you don't damage the valves inside or seals in here if you overheat them. Same thing, I take these off. And I get my Schrader valve remover. And I'm going to take these Schrader valves out. Alright, get my Schrader, towel, uh, Schrader valve remover. Don't lose any of this unless you have more because you don't want to. There's little o rings on there, and if you heat it up when you go to braze, it can cause damage and leak through your service valve and your Schrader valves. So, if you look down there, I'll try to point at it. It's hard to zoom in there, but down there you can see where my finger's touching the top is a filter dryer. So, I took the filter dryer that was on here, so I had to extend this. And when I do that, I use extra copper. And I also, this thing it does wonders, so I try to get the least amount of braze joints as possible. So I have this uh, ProFit um, swedging kit. It works really good, and I'll show y'all that too. Okay, this is the swedge tool. I have to swedge this open. I'm going to try to do it without with one hand. Is it open? You can see it. I 
what you'll do so you can raise this will go one side of it you braise that and that way you can extend it to wherever you need it to but that's you get to just only one braise instead of two most people have their little couplers and I really like that better all right so I also when I, after I cut them I'm gonna use this uh, sandpaper and I like to Clean the areas real good, good contact patch before you braise on any joint you're going to be brazing. Just take some sandpaper and scuff it up really good. Right there is the cutter. Alright, so I'm about to do the uh, braise part on the uh, liquid line. Try to get about three quarters of an inch. Watch the leaves catch on fire. Okay, so I put a nitrogen on the system already. Put, usually put around two gauges a little off, but around two hundred. And then I usually check spray bubbles. So far so good. And you'll know once we do the micron gauge and do the uh, vacuum if we have any leaks. So check it out. Okay, so I put nitrogen on it and let it hold, check for leaks, things like that. So we're gonna get the micron gauges on here soon. I let it sit for about 30 minutes and it hasn't really moved. So let's release it. All right, so I got my vacuum pump set up. I'm running over here with my micron gauge meter on it. So I open everything up. Wide open. Make sure everything's pretty snug by hand. Start it up. I'm gonna see how it uh, cools down. Now this is third floor of the apartment, so it's got a little ways to go. I've seen a reading here in a few moments. There we go. 
Starting to see some action. Right, so I'd like to see that number drop down to 500 or below. We'll take a look at it here in a minute. All right, so I've been vacuuming down for about 30 minutes and we're way below 500 microns. And I'm probably gonna do a double one. Usually I shut that up, see how far it raises. If it gets anywhere over a thousand, I typically will do another one, another vacuum down. All right, thank you. All right, so I usually take my service wrench and I'm opening it up. After I'm done vacuuming, micron gauge down to 500 below. some bubble spray in there as well from earlier nothing is uh service valves look good so I'll put the cap back on also make sure you put your schrader valves in before you vacuum or you'll have to redo it again anyways i have done it a couple times when i first started off and it's a pain in the butt just make sure you did it once you have your refrigerant and everything open, you pretty much can go do your startup and then check your pressures, check your charge, you know, do your split, and uh, that should be it. And you'll have a new AC condenser changed out. Thank you for watching.